Every year, nearly 13 million of us are unwillingly enlisted into a global conflict. The war on cancer is played out on the most intimate of battlefields, within our own bodies. While a great deal of time, hope, and money was being spent on the search for a magic bullet, Lou Cantley took a different approach. He was in search of a target. More than 20 years ago, when we were trying to understand this wiring diagram of the cell, uh, we identified a, a, a node, a protein, really an enzyme, that is critical for most growth factors and hormones to tell a cell what to do. And that node, that enzyme, is called PI3K. The name actually stands for phosphoinositide 3 kinase. We discovered that it was actually doing something that no one had ever observed before, really explaining an entire new wiring diagram that had been missed in the previous 50 years of research into how cells uh, communicate. Or miscommunicate. When it became possible to sequence that, you know, genes at very high rates and identify positions and uh, mutations and deletions in human genes at, at much faster rates, uh, the PI3K itself popped out as a very frequent mutated gene. One of the most frequently mutated genes in all of cancer, in many different types of cancer. Uh, but not only is that interesting, but more interesting, it's druggable. In other words, it's a target. But in order to create new drug therapies, Dr. Cantley had to recreate the cancers exactly. He set his sights on recruiting Pierre Paolo Pandolfi, the man and his mice. I'm genuinely interested in curing cancer, you know, I'm fascinated by research. I realized that he, here was a, just a unique individual, extremely high energy, incredibly creative, extremely brilliant, and young. Now we can recreate leukemias, lung cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer in a mouse with the features which are so faithful that uh, many pathologists would not be able to tell apart the human from the mouse cancer. That re whole recruit took less than a year from the time we decided to look for someone until he arrived at the door with his 25 scientists with him uh, and his 25,000 mice with him <laughs> who, <laughs> that had been engineered to mimic all the human cancers that we're trying to cure. Our cancer center, we have uh, launched a new platform whereby we test each and every drug in patients along with the uh, mouse models and we integrate the data set. So we compare how the human patient does, how the mouse does, what are the genetic determinants which dictate the response or the resistance. So this is a completely novel approach. In the past, when you did clinical trials with a drug, once you decide to go in the clinic, the mouse was forgotten. But Pandolfi has, has really changed that and he already demonstrated that if you engineer the mouse correctly and test the drugs correctly, you can exactly predict which drugs are going to work and which combinations are going to work. And this has ultimately led to a cure for APL, a disease that most people died of only 10 years ago and now virtually no one dies of. So we think we can re recreate this over and over again in other cancers. For their breakthrough work, Lou Cantley and Pierre Paolo Pandolfi have both been recognized by the American Association of Cancer Research with the prestigious Pezcola Awards making Beth Israel Deaconess the only institution with more than one winner in the history of the award. Dr. Cantley also drew the attention of the founders of Stand Up to Cancer, a group of women looking to support innovative and promising research. We started Stand Up to Cancer as seven women who had all been touched by cancer in some way, and we wanted to change the funding model. They wanted to change the culture of clinical trials. And I should say that's exactly the right thing to do. Stand Up to Cancer provided a three-year, $15 million grant to do just that. So when they asked these teams to put together, the so-called dream teams to be put together, I realized that PI3K was right at the stage where the drugs were going into the clinic. There was opportunity for these trials to be established. And if we didn't step in and do anything, they would be done the same way. We found him to just be extraordinary because not only is his team doing incredible work that we're very excited about. Um, our goal is to create less toxic, more effective treatments for patients with cancer and to do it quickly. If you can actually figure out who's going to respond 
and you're right, and 80, 90 percent of the patients that go on your drug show a response, then the drug can be approved very quickly. So I feel at this stage of my life, I would like to see the 20 more, you know, 25 years of work that preceded it getting to this far, I would like to see it come to an end and be beneficial to patients in as quickly as possible. I think we all hope that out of um, Dr. Cantley's work, there will come a cure or making cancer a chronic condition. We'll settle for e either one. And we hope that there will be a pathway that leads to end this horrible disease. In 18 months, the funding from this grant will come to an end. But as Dr. Cantley frankly admits, the job will be far from over. Anyone who says we're going to cure cancer in five years is not either is very naive or not being honest. Half the number of cancer deaths maybe in, in 10 years, that would be a, a really good goal to, to strive for. Uh, and I think we can achieve it, but we're going to achieve it, uh, you know, it's going to require a lot of money. So it's got to come from these, you know, five, 10, 100, you know, whatever you can give, I can tell you. We can use it wisely to make a change in the culture and accelerate getting drugs into patients who are going to benefit. We're thrilled that you're part of Stand Up to Cancer. We congratulate the wonderful hospital as well for all the extraordinary work that you do. And we dream of a world when cancer will be no more. Keep up the good work.